Good morning, Facebook Live. This is Robin Kirby Gatto. Welcome to today. It is Friday, and we're still doing back to basics. Oh, what joy fills my soul. My cup is filled and overflowing. How many of you love the joy of the Lord? If you love the joy of the Lord, which is your strength, Nehemiah 8. I think it's 810. Let me let me make sure. It is Nehemiah. Uh, we also see it in Philippians 1, but it is Nehemiah 810. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Oh my goodness. How awesome is that? First, let me say praise God that he's getting my thyroid fixed. I'm doing tons of research to have my thyroid totally balanced and in optimal fashion and I feel absolutely amazing. Hey Terry, I love you. Hey Donna and Katie Higgum, love you all so much. Thank you for joining in. And oh my goodness, it is like Holy Spirit, I just have to say, share the good report of the Lord. How many of you are looking to obtain a good report? Amen. Good morning, Buffy. Love you, sister. And so, Last night, I woke up and God put people on my heart to pray for, and I prayed for them. And sometimes lately, good morning, Sandra. Good morning, Deborah. I love y'all. Sometimes when I wake up in the middle of the night in the last couple of weeks, I end up feeling this hangover the next day, but I didn't have that. I am so grateful for that. And God just put things on my heart to focus on because how many of you know that the enemy will try to steal your peace? And so God had me in Shalom for the last 48 hours and he knew that something would attack my person and I just walked in such perfect peace. One of the things that he had me post about today was about ethics and we're getting back to basics as we talk about ethics thank you terry thank you buffy good morning kim mitchell i love you we're getting back to basics week and so the back to basics today is luke 6 31 luke 6 31 and so i'm going to share with you of course the golden rule do unto others as you would have them do unto you but when others don't do lovely to you, unto you, you know what? God still provides joy and peace so that you can abound. And it's like you're like those stall-fed calves in Malachi 4 that are coming out in the springtime and the wicked are ashes under your feet and you're just leaping with joy. And I'll get to that scripture in a minute. And oh my goodness, God just really is causing us to abound in the back to basics. That when other people don't do good unto us and they actually do the opposite, that somehow, and it is only supernatural, it is only supernatural that somehow our God prevails. Our God prevails and he causes us to be encapsulated in the love of Christ and we're just hidden, we're just cloaked in Christ and we're in that seventh day rest, Hebrews 4. And we, we are, our members are just unaffected. They're unaffected. And you know, God keeps telling me that he is Lord of the battle and to commit all things into his hands. He really keeps telling me, Robin, commit all things into my hands. Hold on one second. And we see this in Psalm 37, 5 and Proverbs 16. Uh, Psalm 37, 5, just to commit everything to the Lord. And there is such a freedom in committing things to the Lord. And so I want to get into a couple of scriptures because God wants me to bring in some tools of addresses of scriptures that can really just bless you today. 
as we do back to basics, the golden rule, Luke 6, 31, do unto others as, they, as you would have them do unto you. And then also that you'll know how to apply truth to your circumstances when others aren't doing lovely unto you. So let's get to that. What a potent day of back to basics. Amen. And so let me get to, again, Psalm 37, 5, to commit everything to the Lord. That word commit, well, in fact, let me read all of it from the King James Version. It says, commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in him, him and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who brings wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger, forsake wrath, fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. For evil doers shall be cut off, but those that wait on the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Oh my goodness. Now let me read the Amplified Classic. That is just too amazing to pass up. This Walking with Wisdom is going to be just a little longer today. So if you can't stay on, don't feel like you have to. But I want to just give you these scriptures that will so bless you. Amen. Who wants to be blessed with truth? I want to be blessed with truth. So let me read the Amplified Classic. And I'm going to start in verse 1 and read up to that verse that I just mentioned. Fret not yourself because of evildoers. Neither be envious against those who work unrighteousness that which is not upright or in right standing with God. Is this not amazing? Amen, Buffy. Is this not amazing that God loves us so much that he is telling us right here how to apply truth to those in circumstances that are not lovely, that are not good to us, that are doing evil? Is this not amazing? Let me start in verse 1. Amen, Katie. Fret not yourself because of evildoers, neither be envious against those who work unrighteousness, that which is not upright or unright, standing with God, for they will soon be cut down like grass and wither as the green herb. And that goes with your post, Terry uh, Jackson. And those that exalt themselves, the pride that fall comes, that pride comes before destruction. Verse three, trust, lean on, rely on, be confident in the Lord. And do good, so shall you dwell in the land and feed surely on his faithfulness, and truly you shall be fed. This really goes with for your, your circumstance, Katie Higgum. Let me read verse one again and read up to verse three where I was. Fret not yourself because of evildoers, neither be envious against those who work unrighteousness, that which is not upright or in right standing with God, for they shall soon be cut down like grass. And wither as the green herb. Trust, lean on, rely on, be confident in the Lord, and do good. So shall you dwell in the land, and feed surely on his faithfulness, and truly you shall be fed. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he will give you the desires and secret petitions of your heart. Here it is, verse 5. Commit your way to the Lord. Roll and repose each care of your load onto him. Trust, lean on, rely on, be confident also in him. And he will bring it to pass. And he will make your uprightness and right standing with God go forth as the light. And your justice and right as the shining sun of the noonday. Be still and rest in the Lord. Wait for him. Patiently lean yourself upon him. Fret not yourself because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not yourself. It tends only to evil doing. For evil doers shall be cut off, but those who wait on and hope and look for the Lord shall inherit the earth. Now let's look at this word commit and let's see this in Hebrew and unpack the Hebrew ancient Olivet letters. So it's galal, galal. 
and it means to roll. And it, that makes sense because it sounds a little bit like Gilgal. And Gilgal means rolling away the reproach. And we see that with rolling away the stone. And it's so amazing because lately, in the last two days, especially yesterday morning, I just kept feeling an anticipation for Passover. And it was as though Passover feast was just on my heart. And I felt like I was right in the Passover feast at that moment. It was amazing. And it's the rolling away of the reproach. It signifies what Jesus Christ did on the cross and also the power of his resurrection where the stone was rolled away. So galah means to roll away. It means to commit, to remove. It means to trust. How is that a stretch for us? Trusting God. <laughs> God, but... Can't they do this? Can't they do that? Oh my goodness. I thank God that I am not God. I thank God that he humbles me. That just that he humbles me is all I can say. And that he gives me his shalom, his peace, to know that he's in control. It doesn't matter how controlling others are and it seems as though you have no control, guess what? There's a God that is in control over them. And he can do whatever he wants to do, however he wants to do it, in any means necessary. And he is greater than any other person. And David knew this. That's why he could do Psalm 27. And Galal has three Hebrew letters, and it's Gamil Lamed Lamed. Gamil Lamed Lamed. And actually, if you look at the two laments beside each other, it's like an exclamation mark. When you put two words or two letters in Hebrew beside each other, it's an exclamation mark because they didn't have punctuation back then. And so the pattern of the same thing right beside each other was the, excla was the punctuation. And so it would be like, Gamil and Lamed, okay? Gamil and Lamed. And so Gamil is the ancient symbol of a cat of, of a camel. And it means in the positive to lift up. And in the negative, it means pride. Isn't that interesting? And then Lamed is the cattle goad that looks like a shepherd's staff with a prick in the curvature. And it means tongue control and authority. And so you have one Gamil and two Lameds right beside each other. And so the word picture is that God will exalt you by his tongue of authority woo! because he's in control. Man, do you want to run? I want to run on that. I've got Holy Spirit all over me. I am so excited. What? What did he just say? He's in control. What does this word commit mean? God is in control. It doesn't matter who's doing what, doing this, doing that. As I went through circumstances over the last several days, God said, Robin, be at peace. Be at shalom. Commit it to me. Commit it to prayer. Commit it into my hands. In other words, rid yourself of it. Cast your cares. It's not your burden anymore. It's not your care. God is is in control. And when he is in control, he brings his tongue and what he says goes. Woo! Amen, Sue. God knew you needed it, sister. And so, oh my goodness. And so, this is the other thing God blessed me with. A couple of things. Let me read Psalm 21. Because again, last a Tuesday, when I was walking and walking with wisdom, right before I did walking with wisdom, I took a picture of a car tag that said, Be Well 21. Be Well 21. And it was interesting that that day in that 12 o'clock teaching, God had me teach on well from Jeremiah 29, 11 in the Destiny series. Is that not amazing? And so I just felt like God was saying, Robin, be well, Psalm 21. Be well. And so I'm going to read you the verses that God blessed my spirit and my soul with. And I know it will bless you as well. The king shall joy in your strength, O Lord. 
and in your salvation, how greatly shall he rejoice. You have given him his heart's desire and have not withheld the, withheld the request of his lips. Selah. For you send blessings of good things to meet him. You sat a crown of pure gold on his head. He asked life of you and you gave it to him long life forever and evermore. His glory is great because of your aid, your splendor, your majesty that you bestow upon him. For you make him to be blessed and a blessing forever. You make him exceedingly glad with the joy of your presence. For the king trusts, relies on, and is confident in the Lord. And through the mercy and steadfast love of the Most High, he will never be moved. Is that not potent? That as we commit things unto the Lord, we know that he's in control and he is going to give us the desires of our heart. He's going to crown our head with tender mercies. He's going to set a crown of gold upon our head and that we're going to commit and trust all things unto him. And this is the last scripture that God wants me to share as he had me do this scripture this morning, and I posted a few of these on my wall. And this is so amazing. And this is where we'll end today. As Luke 6, 31, the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. But if they don't do unto you, commit it unto God. Also put boundaries up. If you have to block people or not talk to people or whatever, it is better to not be angry, but to commit yourself to God. Amen. And so let's look at Colossians 3. And I'm going to read several verses, at, ver verses out of Colossians 3. And God spoke to me this morning. He said, Robin, Colossians 3. If then you have been raised with Christ to a new life, thus sharing his resurrection from the dead, aim at... Seek the eternal treasures that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God, and set your minds and keep them set on what is above, the higher things, not on the things that are on the earth. For as far as the world is concerned, you have died, and your new real life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in the splendor of his glory. So kill, deaden, deprive of power, the evil desire lurking in your members, those animal impulses, and all that is earthly in you that is employed in sin, sexual vice, impurity, sensual appetites, unholy desires, all greed, covetousness, for that is idolatry the defying of self and other created things instead of God. It is on account of these very sins that the holy anger of God is ever coming upon the sons of disobedience, those who are obstinately opposed to the divine will, among whom you also once walked when you were living in and addicted to such practices, but now put away, rid yourselves completely of these things, anger, rage, bad feeling toward others, curses and slander, and foul mouth abuse and shameful utterances from your lips. Do not lie to one another, for you have stripped off the old unregenerate self with its evil practices, and have clothed yourselves with the new spiritual self, which is ever in the process of being renewed." and remolded into fuller and more perfect knowledge upon knowledge after the image and likeness who create of who he who created it then it goes on to say in this new creation all distinctions vanish there is no room for there can neither be greek nor jew circumcised nor uncircumcised nor difference between nations whether alien barbarians or scythians who are almost savage nor slave or free man but christ is all in all everything and everywhere to all men without distinction of person clothe yourself therefore as god's own chosen ones his own picked representatives who are purified and holy 
and well-beloved by God himself by putting on behavior marked by tender-hearted pity, mercy, kind feeling, a lowly opinion of yourself, gentle ways, patience, which is tireless and long-suffering, and has the power to endure whatever comes with good temper. Be gentle and forbearing with one another. And if one has a difference or grievance or complaint against another, readily pardoning, pardoning each other, examine as the Lord has freely forgiven you, so must you also forgive. And above all these, put on love and enfold yourselves with the bond of perfectness, which binds everything together completely in ideal harmony and let the peace the soul harmony which comes from christ rule act as an umpire continually in your hearts deciding and settling with finality all questions that arise in your minds in that peaceful state to which as members of christ one body you are also called to live and be thankful, appreciative, giving praise to God always. Let the word spoken by Christ, the Messiah, have its home in your hearts and minds and dwell in you in all its richness as you teach and admonish and train one another in all insight and intelligence and wisdom and spiritual things as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, making melody to God with his grace in your hearts. And whatever you do, no matter what it is in word or do, deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus and in dependence upon his person, giving praise to God through our uh, God the Father through him. So, saints, that is it. Amen, Kathy. That is it. Commit all things to God. Trust in Him. He's in control. He has the final word. He has the final word. No matter what people think. And look to clothe yourself in Christ in the deeds and the works of good fruits. God bless you. I love you. Have an awesome week and I'll see you later.